and welcome back to another video. This, as you can see, is a wind up torch. And as you can see, it don't work. So let's have a look inside. Let's have a look inside. Let's see what's there. Only four screws by the look of it. Four screws. And it's the back. Nothing in the back apart from the button, rubber, and the over moulding. And here we have the electrics. Can they be unwound? Yep. So, there we have it. A motor generator with a a gear ratio, a battery, and the circuit board. Let's have a look under the circuit board. Nothing on that side except the uh, three LEDs. So let's cut away the uh, have a look what the battery is. Need a sharper scalpel. I get a picture about the light reflecting on it. Lithium iron rechargeable battery LIR two four five volt three point six volts. I reckon that's a goner. Sign the multimeter. In the trusty fluke in. Point five volts. So it's been it's being overcharged. It's holding a bit of charge. But, uh, obviously not enough to light the LEDs. So should we have a a look at the circuit? Let's bring in my little microscope camera and bring it on. 
there we can see there is no branding on the microprocessor there are three wires coming from the uh, the motor here so that tells you that it's a uh, yeah, it's a three phase motor and that is probably why there are I should bring that a bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six pairs of diodes. So that's probably a forming a free phase rectifier. That one says five volts. I wonder if that's a, that could be a Zena. Let me look down there. We have what looks like to be a FET or something, 2TY. We'll look that up and see what it is. There's the switch back to the micro. So that's about all it is. And I expect the micro is just there to do the on and off and the flashing mode. There doesn't appear to be any uh, charging control or anything like that. I'm not sure if I can do a big clive and uh, check, chase out all the circuitry. But uh, maybe we can have a, a quick go, maybe. For all those playing along at home, here's a quick look at the circuit board. Single sided, nothing on the back. And here it is again with some uh, coloured lines on it to help. Well, a bit of a uh, hand drawn CAD. There's a the generator. It's only got three windings, so I expect it is in a delta configuration. As a, I suppose it could be in a Y. So it could possibly look. Does a Y? I can't remember. Does a Y need a neutral? So that's four wires. No, a delta A needs three, so only three. And there's the. Uh, Three phase bridge rectifier, that bit there. Why it's got a five volt, five V6. Oh, I put K there. Why it's got a five volt, 5.6 volt Zener. I suppose, stop it going way too high, but it's only got a, yeah, the battery gets damaged above 4.2, so not quite sure why they went for that. They've put a 0 ohm link in just in case you want to do it. I want you to put a different resistor in at some point and there's diode protection to stop the battery from trying to back feed through the rectifier no markings on the chip whatsoever whether it's a standard type pick don't know you'd need to look at what pins four and eight are but uh, i don't really care because all it does is when you first press the button it pulls current via that LED, center LED through pin seven to ground to light that LED. When you press it the second time, it turns that transistor on. I haven't drawn the little arrow yet, but that's probably a PNP. So uh, yeah, it turns that one on. So it's probably got So if you pull that down greater than 0.6 of a volt, or pull it low, then the current will flow down there. Press the button the third time, and it obviously switches these two so that that one and those two flash for its flashing one. And then on the thing, it's the fourth press, it all turns off. So. That's the circuit. Oh, just so I don't lose the screws. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna gain anything by uh having this undone. Now, is it the right way round? I hope so.
Always remember, rotate the wrong way to you. Hear it click. And you're in the old cut groove. I'll screw it up. Well, just for those who noticed, I screwed the board on the wrong way around. All right, well, I found this battery. It might fit, hopefully. So uh, it's got the protection board. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a board in there. So it's got protection board, which might help. Just a matter of uh, desoldering these wires, he says. They've used Chinesium solder by the look of it. Uh, Flood it with some good old English solder. Works every time. Good old English solder. Hmm. That didn't work, it just fell off. Just tap, tag this battery on. Up on that one. Blob on there. Oh, if I had some Patreons, I could get a better camera. But uh, my current sponsor doesn't run to things like that. Now, hopefully, that will fit somewhere like that. case go on. Well, I might have to do this out of view if you want to watch that. Yeah, I'm going to work this one out. Yeah, you're not going to see it because I'm going to have to crank it somewhere else. It's getting really hard to crank. Quite easy. Oops. See, it's easy. You can see how easy it is to turn. 
And as you get faster, you get to the point where the voltage is, when it's starting to draw current, and it gets harder. Do you think it would be interesting to actually see how much current there is? Should we try that? Before I find some sticky tape and glue that in and see how well my wind up torch works. So let's carefully take that out. Amps DC. What happens when you do the light on? Oh, don't tell me my finger's got a uh, blown fuse. Try a second meter. This is an old Maplin one. The battery still works. I get a new fuse for me fluke. So 84 milliamps on high power. And about 22 on low power. There comes the problem. Oops. Milliamps. So let's get that out of the way. Time to cause any shorts. So about a hundred milliamps. the battery back on that's a lousy joint I don't know if it's been in any shop before, but that's my uh, 3D printed solder stand for my Loctite leaded solder. Just simple. And a little hole for the solder to go through, bend it down when you don't want it. And a bit of cork mat on the bottom. Stops it sliding-ish. Right. Put this back together. Stop the PCB. Slot the PCB in. That's got a, a tucked 
out of the way somehow. I won't get caught with the teeth. Non-sticky, double-sided sticky. I have some of this stuff. Which I can't remember what it is. And the hardest part is getting the backing off. So I think it's well past its sell-by date. Which is why I've got it. Grip with the backing. Oh, everything's falling apart. That's meant to be in there. That's going to go on there. I need to get some more of this. Teflon, it's oh, Teflon tape, Kapton tape. It is very useful. All right. All goes back together. And will we notice? See that? Very easy to turn. Yeah. Everything to do now is run it down and see how it goes. If you'd like to subscribe, hit the bell for notification, right? And I'll catch you on the next one. I'll, uh, if I remember, I'll come back later, tell you how it, how long it ran for. Well, about three hours later, and it's virtually out. But, uh, But uh, a few turns brings it back to usable, usable brightness again. So I think that's a good one. Thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.